Hey, it's Monday night once again, and it's time for voiceover body shop. Everybody gathered out there in internet land. Yeah, man. <laughs> Is it my turn to you talk? Know, yeah, you can talk oh, okay. all you want. It's our yeah, show. We're, we're um, going to have a fun show tonight. We've got an audience full of folks here and people that came all the way from Orange County yeah. to be here with us tonight, which if you know L.A., it's quite a journey. Yeah, especially this time of day. You're not getting anywhere. Tim Keenan is our guest tonight from Creative Media Recording Studios down there. Great studio. We're going to talk about all sorts of stuff, especially social media and how to act properly in the studio. Mm -hmm. Plus, we've got What's Up in Tech. You've got What's an in interesting tech? story. A story shared to me by Maxine about you know preparing for and doing e-learning. Right. You might want to pay attention. Right. And we're going to talk a little bit about Keeping your equipment cool and how cool is cool and why is stuff heating up? All coming up on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Yeah. Wow. Listen to that audience. Cavernous audience out there. <laughs> it's in this huge auditorium. Next time we'll we hit the, the reverb. In. Yeah, there you go. That, that will help a little bit. Yeah. Well, good evening. Uh, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. Our guest tonight is Tim Keenan, good friend of ours from down in Cypress, California, which mm -hmm. is like near Disneyland. I guess is the Disney best way adjacent. to describe. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean if you're actually like in the hotel at Disneyland, you can like almost see his place <laughs> from up there. Maybe from the Tower of Terror. Tower or whatever of Terror. That, Tower of Terror top. is not even there anymore. Oh, well, that's they Disney. changed it to something else. Maybe it's a Harry Potter. No, that's another park. I'm yeah. getting confused between yeah. all these parks now. Yeah, I was down in Orange County this, on Sunday visiting my mom, and I'm, you know, you drive back on the on the five, you suddenly see the Matterhorn. You can only see the Matterhorn going one way if you're heading north. That's Otherwise, it's behind it. Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom apart. Right. There's no, there's no Matterhorn, Matterhorn down there. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, so um, we've got uh, we're talking with Tim about some really cool stuff. Lots of different subjects. Uh, we've got some tech. If you've got a question for us, George or I, uh, about your home voiceover studio technological issues or a question about how you do something. Yeah. Put it in the chat room. Jack Daniels in our chat room tonight, as he always is, and he will relay those questions to us. Now would be a really good time for that to do beat that. to start. Yes. <laughs> that just indicates that Mrs. Leonard is heading out. <laughs> Reloy. Or, or heading in. So I'm like, oh, you know. She actually has a clean up the crumbs. <laughs> yes. She has a product that she's been trying to market. Yeah. Uh, originally it was called Canabreeze. Uh huh. But somebody said, well, you can't really have the name canna in there because it's... What? It's, What's wrong with a can of uh, breeze? breeze? Yeah. It's a can of breeze. Yeah, but they had to change the name. Yeah. So the new name that we've come up with is... Because what it does is it neutralizes the smell of cannabis. Yeah. So we she threw it out on Facebook. What should I call it? 
somebody said, crap, my parents are home. <laughs> you know, or, ah. or, or, or shoot, the kids are home. <laughs> yeah, you can market it in two ways. Do yeah. one of those split marketing Oh, things, absolutely. See which one sells so, more. Yeah, that's it's, hilarious. Yes, well, that, that's her latest venture. I love it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, enough of this dilly-dallying. It's now time for... It's time for the voiceover extra news for July 16th, 2018. Voices.com lawsuit. In case you haven't heard, Voices.com is being sued. The online casting giant has come under fire in recent years by voice actors who've discovered what appeared to be large hidden fees in transactions that match voice seekers with voice talent. These are what Voices calls managed fees, and it's resulted in a number of canceled subscriptions among voice actors. However, that is not what this suit is about. This suit was filed by voice actor and coach J. Michael Collins, alleging deceptive marketing, specifically for Voices.com's unauthorized use of a video in its marketing in which Collins shares tips on how he obtains auditions and jobs using online casting. Collins had recorded that video some time ago and gave permission to Voices to use it in the firm's marketing until he revoked that permission by email last August. That's about the time he also canceled his subscription to the online service. Now, Collins says Voices agreed at that time to no longer provide a link to that video. But in March this year, Collins learned that Voices was still linking the video in its marketing newsletters. The lawsuit filed recently in United States District Court, Southern District of New York, charges voices with, quote, unlawful conduct and deceptive trade practice, and says that this continued use of his likeness and implied endorsement of the firm has caused him irreparable harm. Hmm. Collins is opting for a jury trial to determine compensatory and punitive damages. Is rep he's represented in this by the attorney and voice actor, Rob Siglin-Paglia. You can read more details about this suit in an article now on voiceoverextra.com. For several days prior to publishing this article, Voice Over Extra was in contact with Voice's CEO, David Cicerelli, and the head of Voice's public relations department, inviting the firm to comment. Their initial response was that they had not yet seen the complaint so couldn't comment. In those contacts, VoiceOver Extra had forwarded a copy of the complaint to the firm, and the video in question was reportedly removed last Thursday. No further comment about this has been received from Voices.com. Interestingly, VoiceOver Extra did receive a voice message late last week from Voices Marketing Director to introduce herself. VoiceOver Extra is also seeking an update on the class action suit filed in April by several women in New York against voice actor trainer Peter Rofe. They allege sexual harassment and assault during training and recording sessions with Rofe. We'll keep you posted on both suits. Meanwhile, check out the details along with hundreds of additional helpful articles at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Well, I didn't really expect our news to actually turn into like News like this kind of news. I did. Like, what's going on around here? Well, it's there's news. <laughs> there actually Reporting is the news. news. That's what we're supposed there's to be voice doing over, here. There's actually voice news. over news. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's like I find some news. <laughs> hey, okay, it's the same old stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, there's, yeah, there's a little bit of drama happening out there in the world of voiceover. Yeah. So, what's up in tech with you this week? Well, um, I didn't see anything really particularly interesting from a like nuts and bolts, microphones and wires perspective, but uh, I did get an interesting, have a great experience actually recently in hearing a story, a tale of learning, dealing and working through an e-learning project. Maxine actually um, is experiencing the process of recording, editing, and basically doing the entire process of an e-learning project right now. And 
she has learned that tools of the trade are required to make it doable in a reasonable time frame. It's been a very difficult project because e-learning is one of those types of voiceover that requires a lot of steps for the voice actor to execute. Dividing files into many small pieces, labeling those files, consistent sound quality, all the way. There's a lot of things to sort out. So basically what she's learned along the way and what you guys are going to want to know when you start into an e-learning project is because there's so many files that have to be generated, you don't want to just do it maybe the way you're accustomed to when recording a narration or even possibly an audiobook. There are techniques you want to learn. And, and this is a really important thing when you're trying to get through a project of this nature. Now, Maxine happens to use SoundForge. Out there on the web, thanks to Dan Leonard and uh, a video that actually I located on Twitter, by the way. And this is an aside. This video Dan produced numer several years ago. Yeah. What, four or five years four ago? Four or five years ago, yeah. And it was for Twisted Wave. And the timing of this tweet that happened to pop up in the feed <laughs> it was happens. amazing because yeah. Maxine was, was struggling with this. And I was trying, I was like, you know, I, I know I've seen a video somewhere that explains how to make this easier. Boom, up comes a tweet from our Twitter system saying, have you seen this video on e-learning? Maxine gave it a look, and the video outlines how to split your files in uh, using the markers, split the file into a lot of smaller files in an automated way that saves a huge amount of time. So that was one thing that was a big game changer for her that sped things up. But another thing is also using keyboard shortcuts. Now, I'm a bit of a computer geek, and I've always liked using keyboard shortcuts. I've always thought they were an important part of being fast, but... I've never been like a nut about them. I know people that are extremely keyboard shortcut centric. I use a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but not that much. But in the process of doing this kind of work, using keyboard shortcuts can be a massive time saver. When you're doing things that are really redundant, using a mouse will slow you down. It may not seem that way, but going to the drop down menus, doing this over and over, you can do that far faster using key st uh, keyboard shortcuts. It's not a matter of learning every keyboard shortcut. It's a matter of learning the right keyboard shortcuts. And so learning a few keyboard shortcuts are going to speed things up for you dramatically. So if you do decide to take on an e-learning project, make sure you've got some of the right tools at your disposal. Learn some keyboard shortcuts for your software. Use a software that's really designed for this kind of production work. I don't know too many people that can do what you can do with SoundForge and Twistawave in things like Pro Tools. You know, Pro Tools is a fantastic tool for recording and doing mix and production, but when you're going to convert and make hundreds of small files, tools that are really designed for editing and generating files like Twisted Wave and SoundForge, probably a better tool for you. Absolutely. You mentioned earlier Adobe Audition right. also has a similar capability. Yeah, it's it's a little contrived, but if you, you right-click on a, on a mark, you can stretch it out and create a range and then separated by ranges you can name all the ranges all the markers and it works just as well great if you're doing like multiple takes or if you're doing several different spots and you need to send them to separate files like you know do three four takes or something and then send it out that way the thing that makes it unique and if you watch dan's video just go on go on youtube search search for dan leonard e-learning anthony Gedick also has a video yeah um why these softwares do what they do so well is because they allow you to do an interesting trick which is select a range of audio with a marker in it and move or copy that audio and paste the marker. That may not sound like a big deal, but things like Pro Tools or Reaper, any multi-track software, Audacity, the marker stays locked in time. It doesn't follow the selection necessarily. Right. So it's harder to do something like this. Now, my expertise on, the, on those systems is a little bit limited. There may be ways to do it. And if you have a way to do what we can do in Twisted Wave and SoundForge with those other DAWs. Why don't you we type it down below in the comments on YouTube and we'll share it with everybody. But yeah. that was a revelation and it's really dramatically speeding up her workflow on this project. When I discovered that feature in Twisted Wave, it cut my editing time on long e-learning stuff where there'd be like you know 90, 100 files that I had to separate out. And it cut my editing time by more than a third. Wow. That's so, significant. That's really significant. It used to be that it was like three to one was like the editing ratio on long format stuff. And it's down to, to me, it's like, it's one to one, essentially. 
I know the math doesn't add up there, but I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> one point one to I'm, one. I'm a voice actor and an engineer. <laughs> it's so. fa- it's much 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 faster. So yes. basically, learn your tools, folks. Don't slog it out. You know, you might get a project thrown in your lap, and you're like, I'm going to get it done. Sometimes you just have to stop, regroup, learn a few new tricks, and then soldier on because it could end up saving you a lot of time in the end. It, it might be worth it for you to learn something midstream. Excellent. All righty. Well, Tim Keenan's coming up in just a little bit. We have some discussion stuff, a couple of questions to deal with, mm-hmm. and we'll take care of all of that right after these messages. Don't go away. Thrilling days of yesteryear, and we find our heroes, Sheriff Dan and Marshal George, on a dusty stakeout at VoiceOver Gulch. Let's see what drama is about to take place. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Okay, you want to be an audiobook narrator, but you don't know where to turn for the best training. And the truth about working successfully with ACX. Well, here's your golden ticket. Registration for the 2018 ACX Home Study Audiobook Masterclass is now open for a very limited time at acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. You'll get four weeks of absolutely transformational training via audio, video, and online with support every step of the way. And you'll be led by none other than David H. Lawrence the 17th and Dan O'Day, whose past students have narrated and produced close to 3,000 audiobooks on the ACX platform. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. And when you register before 9 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday, July 19th, today's the 16th, so that's got to be okay. Anyway, David and Dan will pay your first $500 of your tuition. Act fast. acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. Do what you've dreamed of doing. Narrating audiobooks as part of your VO portfolio. Go to acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. That's acxmasterclass.com forward slash register. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back on VoiceOver Body Shop. Fun week if you're dealing with people with audio problems. Had one this week where... It's always fun. Someone sent me some audio and said, there's some digital schmutz in it. <laughs> schmutz. Digital schmutz. You came to the right guy. I am, absolutely, because <laughs> I know what schmutz means. Um, but anyway, I'm listening and I'm hearing... Shh. I'm like, yeah, but it's not digital. And she sends me, you know, I said, send me a raw file because she, you know, she was using a stack and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then I hear the entire thing. And at the end I hear, all right, can you do that one again? It's the phone. Oh, the phone <laughs> patch was in the mix. <laughs> mix minus, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Is this where we get to explain the concept of mix minus? Well, we can talk about it. We'll get to it. But okay. the idea is that this is what George and I do all day. We... Pull, we get phone calls and emails and audio and people send us this stuff. And with one little listen, we know what the problem is. Yeah. It's the phone. Yeah. I hope she's not watching. Anyway. Um, we didn't name any names. Did I, I did not know, but okay. she knows who she is. Anyway. But if you need so. if you need help. If you don't know your, who you are. Don't, sorry, don't, we, don't we, call we us then. You. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, if you need help with your home studio, there's only two places you should go. 
One of them is to go see Mr. Widom. And where do you get him? I'm over at uh, georgethetech.com where you can book me on the website. I have an automated scheduler. There's also a whole bunch of self-service stuff where you send your files in and I send it back to you. And that's where you find me. Dan, how about you? Well, they can find me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com where you can read all about me and go, eh. Uh, but then you'll see <laughs> all the stuff that we do uh, over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Uh, like... Listen to your audio for 25 bucks. I will analyze your audio and see if it's up to snuff. And if not, we'll get it snuffing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's <laughs> the way we, we look at things and how we fix them. And we have heard so many audio files. We need point. to bring back Thousands. bad audio of the week. Yeah, if anybody, if it's anybody's been years since we did that, submit their audio. We used to do a segment called bad audio, audio of, of the, the week. week. It was it was great because everybody learned a lot. Yeah, and then people started searching for bad audio and sending us all sorts of garbage. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, if you need help with your home studio, mm -hmm. we're the guys that do that. So anyway, yeah. we had a question before we get into our topic of the evening uh, from Fred North. Do we want to do we want to go a little further into what that phone patch thing was about? Well, she was holding the phone up to her ear. Oh, she was doing it that way. Yeah. Did so she have it on speakerphone? Yeah. Okay. There's a couple ways of doing a mix minus. I won't get into the details of why we call it that. And if you don't have a mixer, mix minus is kind of like. It's kind of irrelevant. Yeah. But if you're going to use a phone as your phone patch, totally acceptable. But just use an earpiece. Plug, plug an earbud in or something so it's in just your ear because you never know what's going to get into the mic. You don't want to ruin a take. You don't want to have that thing going on. That's an easy fix. Right. And as she said, I'm not going to be doing that again. No, well, you know, you don't know Living what you learn. don't know. Right? That's right. Anyway, Fred North sent in a question this week. And of Fred. course, we invite your questions. Uh, he said, how quiet is good enough for a home studio? Mm. What's the target noise floor? Mm. Well, first, we have to explain what a noise floor is. Noise floor, room tone. Two, right. two terms get flip-flopped all the time all and mishmashed around. Right. And, uh, you know, it's... Is the way I describe it, there's this phrase of signal to noise ratio. And yep. signal being your voice. That's the that's the loud stuff. Right. That bounces along up here. Right. It's supposed to be just your voice. And noise that's is the, everything else. That's the junk down here at the bottom that you know you see when you're not speaking, that crud in the waveform. That's right. the noise. And when we were deciding upon you, me, Uncle Roy. And, uh, and Cliff, we're deciding on what were the standards for home voiceover studios. We decided on, we looked at minus 50 dB, but we moved it up to minus 55. Or and, down, as or, the case may be. Or down. Depending on how you look at it. It's <laughs> negative numbers. I always get confused. <laughs> but uh, minus 55 is what you really want to shoot for, but you want to get it quieter than that. You like really minus want 60. to. Yeah, so, and it's not easy to do. We're talking about peak by the way. So yeah. if you're looking at your meter, for example, in Twisted Wave, there's a, a little number at the top of the meter. That's the peak level. There's one at the bottom. That's the RMS level. The RMS level is not what we're talking about. Right. That's what ACX is talking about. That's confusing. That's, and that's a whole other topic. ACX gives you a spec of minus 60 dB noise floor, but RMS, which is a lot easier to achieve than a peak level of... Uh, Minus 60 right. or minus 55. Right. Yeah. Now we decided on that because once that gets down to that level, it's, it's somewhat inaudible depending on the frequency of the noise. That's the other thing. Yeah. So, you know, what's the frequency of the noise, right? The lower the frequency of the noise, the less audible it tends to be. Right. Yeah. You know, it's down there and you'll see the meter going yeah. like this. The rumble but, is really hard to hear. Yeah. The yeah. meter goes berserk but you don't really hear it. Right. The fortunate thing about rumbles is, is it's really, I think, the easiest thing to clean up. Yeah. A high-pass filter, you can very quickly eliminate that from it, your recording. Yeah. It's below the level of your voice's frequency because the human voice is really, what, between, uh, you know, say 80 hertz and 80, 16, 16K. Something like that. You know, for people that have really high voice. That's the sibilance. Is <laughs> yes. Tops out around 15, 16K. Yeah. So, uh that's how quiet you've got to get your studio. How you get it, everybody has tried just about everything. We talked about noise reduction right. as like sort of a last resort. Right. So you want to do the noise reduction physically. And you really uh, do. Get the initial noise floor in your booth or your living room or wherever it is you're recording 
down to about minus 55, minus 60. Or maybe, so, maybe Tim later will tell us about the noise floor of his studio. That's I'll, always a piece of... I'll bet it's infinite. That's a... That's a bragging right for a yeah. professional studio. Right. Unless there's like a, you know, a C-130 landing at the Air Force Base. You know, <laughs> it shakes the entire yeah, earth. I'm sure that happens occasionally. Yeah. Let, I mean... <laughs> or Air Force One. Yeah. Air Force One. <laughs> no, I, I mean, we, we go kind of nuts for that number. And, and sometimes, you know, somebody will send me a sample and a sound check. And I'll look at the meter and it says minus 43 or minus 35. And I'll be like, oh, not bad. Or not so great. Not so great. Then I'll just apply a high pass filter. Just I hit H on Twisted Wave, hit Enter, and then I do another sound check or do another uh, meter check. And by the way, here's another thing that people get wrong. When you're measuring noise floor, don't normalize the room tone. <laughs> so what I mean is don't yeah. select just the room tone and then normalize it and go, oh my gosh, it's so loud. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen. If you select room tone normalize it you're taking the room tone and bringing it really 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 loud so don't do that okay. always record your voice and the room tone in context right you need that signal to noise ratio to get a to get an accurate reading exactly you know, that's really important yeah now the question we have tonight is, you mean there's a question well that was a question <laughs> this was the question i posed for oh, tonight okay. as i was sitting around going what, the, what are we going to talk about time tonight? man uh no we're not you're just talking on here okay okay studio environment how cool should you keep the equipment now if you've ever walked into a tv studio uh, yeah you got to wear a sweater in the middle of summer because it's, it's they air condition the heck out of it. i think they did it for two reasons okay one. one is to keep the equipment cool right two is so you don't fall asleep ah it's a lot harder to pass out and just kind of get you know groggy when it's right. cold right if you've ever been in a tv state you know on a game show or something like they keep the energy level up <laughs> yes they do you know, you're exhausted you got to keep moving end. around <laughs> yeah, it was on let's make a deal last year and it was like <sighs> you want to stay yeah. for another no i'm good um what kind of experience have you had with overheating equipment uh well my computer tends to get hot I remember that uh, Apple had a problem with a battery uh, about 10 years ago, and they replaced the batteries. And I actually had a fan that would cool off, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the the machine. I think it's probably more critical on computers than anything else, mm -hmm. because everything else is solid state. Yeah. And But do things fail when they get overheated? I mean, do some things have thermal fuses, and do interfaces start to do weird things when they warm up, and why? I, well, yeah, I mean, if something gets, if a circuit gets hot enough... It can reach a failure point. And every piece of gear you buy, there's always somewhere in the boring specs at the very bottom of the instructions or some is like the operating range, the temperature operating range of that piece of gear. It's usually pretty wide, like minus minus forty degrees or something to hundred degrees. Designed to work in your car in the middle of summer. Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. But um you'll yeah, you'll find there's an upper limit to that. And how will you know if it's overheating? Basically erratic behavior. Like it's just acting really strange. You don't really know why. Or, Dropouts. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, just just unpredictable behavior. With computers, it's a little more obvious. First of all, almost always the fan goes berserk. That's kind of Sounds obvious. Sounds like a hair dryer. Right? Yeah, the fan goes to full blast, and eventually a computer will protect itself, and it does that by slowing down the clock speed, which basically means your computer gets slow. So if you're experiencing really bad performance and your computer fans going berserk it could be because there's somebody controlling your computer and turning it into a botnet and attacking you or it could mean that your computer is just reaching its maximum temperature and it needs to protect itself in the old days the computers didn't have that and i remember watching a video years ago where someone would remove the heat sink off of a computer and the, the, the die where the chip is, you know, the actual chip inside yeah. would reach to the point of heat failure within seconds. Wow. Like they'd pull it off and it would immediately, it would start to discolor and burn out. That's how fast those yeah. things can burn out. Now, the new computer that we run this show on has a liquid cooling system. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not serious. happening to our thing, but yeah. that thing is running some major horsepower. So. Yeah. No, it's, it's incredible. The, the CPU and your computer is really like the size of a postage stamp. And then you have a huge heat sink on top of that, an even bigger fan on top of that, trying to dissipate the heat that's coming off that ship. It's pretty mind boggling how much heat comes out of that thing. Yeah. Make, just makes you think how much heat your brain is you know, creating. 
Yeah, I mean, what do we what do we put out like a hundred something watts something of heat like event heat energy just just sitting there talking? Yeah, but yeah, some of us more. Do your best to keep it cool. Um, you know, it's most homes basically. If you're too hot to work, the computer probably is. It's probably not likely the computer is going to fail if if you're still working. But you know, it every studio is different, and uh, if it's getting slow. Time to cool things down and take a break. It's right. a good t- chance to take a break. Turn the air conditioning back on. And if you got AC, boy, I hope you do. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, we're going to keep things really cool here with Tim Keenan in just a couple minutes. So stay tuned. We'll be right back to talk to him and answer your questions after these messages. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there in the trenches doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the home studio master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Hey, everybody. Well, this is the point in the show where I get to talk about our friends at Source Elements and the cool software they make called Source Connect. And they've got a lot of stuff. They've got Source Connect, Source Connect Now, Source Live, Source Zip. You'd be kind of amazed at how many products they have. Every time I go to their website, I swear I see something new. But the thing that you probably want to know about the most, because it's the tool that's going to allow you to connect to clients all around the world and play at that kind of that next level of voiceover where you're live directed, and live recorded by the studio, that tool is Source Connect. And you can get a free trial right now over at source-elements.com. 15-day free trial of Source Connect standard. The beauty of that software is it doesn't require any hardware iLock dongle USB thingamajig to use it. You can immediately download and start trying the software out. Then if you decide you like it, you can pay for it up front and own that license forever. Some people really prefer that. Or if that's a little bit dear to you, um, or you'd really rather have an ongoing support contract with ongoing upgrades, updates, you can actually do a subscription model for that software. But go give it a shot. Uh, let them know that we sent you over there because we really appreciate them sticking around. And if they know we're, we're sending you, they'll, they'll keep sending us money and we'll keep the show in the air. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sponsoring us. And we'll be right back here with Dan and Tim right over there. Already time to introduce our guest. For over three decades, Tim has owned and operated Creative Media Recording with his wife Linda. Let's let's take that again because I've been I was so busy reveling in how great my spot was that I didn't have their mic on. <laughs> and take. I have a bad habit of doing two. that. Okay, and already it's time to introduce our guest Tim Keenan. And Tim, for the last three decades has owned and operated Creative Media Recording in Cypress, California. It's a professional media recording studio serving independent producers, corporations, and ad agencies throughout Southern California. And he runs this with his lovely life, wife, Linda, who really runs the place. Let's welcome Tim Keenan. Tim, how you doing? Welcome. Thank you. Great to see you. Welcome to the the clubhouse here. Hey, this was fun. Yeah, well, it's, nice. it's great to have you I was here. Watching that sunset as I drove up here to the uh, studio. Yeah, it's kind of blinding coming it up is. to four oh five. You know, depending on what direction you're but going. But it's so beautiful. In. It is. I mean, this is this is California here. That's, That's it. Anywho, how did you get into 
owning a recording studio? Wow, that is really a good question. That's why I asked yeah. it. You like, like a lot of voiceover people, I started out in radio, and uh, I was pursuing, a, you know, I was a radio TV major at Cal State Long Beach and ran a radio station there on campus at the time. I started actually in high school, got involved mm-hmm. in radio in high right. school, and uh, went to work in radio, a couple of different stations, and the last station I worked at, uh, the chief engineer of that station had started Creative Media. And he says, hey, would you like to come do some freelance work for me? And with these big projects we're working on, blah, 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 I could use a freelancer. Sure. I was, he could see I was into production. That's my background is right. the production side of it. And uh, I said, what is it that you're doing? He says, well, I have this Army contract with this producer. We're doing all these Army training programs, hundreds, literally hundreds of Army training programs. So that's kind of where I started, cut my teeth, and right. you know, got involved in it exposed me to the whole non-broadcast corporate side of production that kind of is a forgotten right. part of the business. Yeah. Proper use of a bayonet. There you go. Uh, but How to you clean your M16. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then put it back together. But the cool thing was we got to use lots of talent, worked yeah. with a lot of different talent, music, sound effects, production. It was a, it was an elaborate project. It wasn't yeah. your grandma's training, as they say, related <laughs> to e-learning, you know. So how did you come in possession totally of this, uh, this operation? The, it was yeah, kind of a... Long story, but uh, the owner had lost interest in the business when he inherited some land in the high desert, and he was a chief engineer at multiple radio stations, and it was, like, hard to keep it busy. And the whole time I worked for him, I said, boy, if I ran this studio, I would do this totally different. Whoa, got my opportunity. And uh, they actually carried a note for us when we bought it, Linda and I bought it, and, uh, you know, helped us, you know, as a mentor and got us into it, and then uh, slowly built the business up and built a new studio in Cyprus uh, exactly 30 years ago. Wow. And uh, the rest is history. Yeah. And it's a beautiful studio. Thank you. It's always fun to walk in there and go, this is really cool. And it's 30 years old and it's held up. What's really cool is going in the back room and seeing all the stuff I want to buy. There you go. (laughs) These, the old, the old tape machines. 16 track, analog. Yeah. 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 Those were the days. Yes. You know, somebody was, somebody was asking the other day, what'll last a while? I said, (laughs) an Ampex mono recorder from a radio station. Still works. It'll still works. Clunk. It's a tank. thud. You know, and then it'll, 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 but you know, you still got to edit with that. And right. and that's the way you learn to edit. Razor blades. Way, yeah. And a little that, bit. If you learn that way, th- this was like drawing with crayons, doing it digitally. It really, it really so much simpler and easier. Yes. Yes, definitely. You know? But it was a learning curve. Definitely. Yeah. You know, when did, when did you transition to totally uh, digital? I would say, uh, in the nineties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We transitioned with the early system in the nineties. And uh, then went, you know, to uh, PC-based system yeah. initially, and now Mac-based. How many different microphones do you have in the locker there? I, I you know, I've been weaning myself of uh, <laughs> the microphone collection and have some for sale, as a matter of fact. So oh, good. I've limited it down to about four or five that we use on a regular basis. What do you usually use? Uh, Audio-Technica 4033 is kind of the one, you know, my go-to mic, but we own a Neumann U87, which I pull out for some people, and... AT4040, which is a little kind of a different sound than the 4032. It's a little brighter. Uh, I won an AKG <laughs> mic called an Icon from mm-hmm. Music Connection, and I actually like it. It's very quiet. It's got a different sound, so I pull that out when we're doing demos or something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't own a shotgun mic. Oh, you don't have a 416? I do not have a 416 because we've never really done a lot of promos. Don't, you know, that the, uh, the sound never turned me on, and I never wanted to invest in one, and... So there you go. That's, and that's the sound that your studio has. There you go. Yeah. Now, you have two studios in there. What goes on in those two different So we studios? have two different production rooms and one booth in between two production rooms. And uh, initially, when we, were, when we first opened that studio in the late 80s, it was a go-go time, and we would book a narration like at 9 o'clock that way and at 10 o'clock that way. But we also do a lot of things that aren't voiceover related. We do a lot of post-production things, and so that's why we could get away with doing two studios and one booth in between. Right. And that's mixing music and sound effects. and We do foreign know. language conversions of oh, projects. Cool. We do, uh, you know, a lot, then after we record, we do a lot of editing and file making and all those things. And uh, so, yeah. Now, uh, Studio B is more of an overflow studio that we use for uh, editing multiple projects. So mm. when we got things going, we can be in the booth and somebody can be editing in Studio mm. B. So Any... Big name talent that have wandered through your doors? Oh, you bet. Uh, well, you know, the the great thing for me uh, is I started in this business, like we said, 30 years ago. And I've seen, you know, sadly people pass away. The fabulous voice from people that we worked with. One in particular that comes to mind is a, a guy by the name of Larry Burrell. He was a TV newscaster in L.A. in the 80s, 70s and 80s. 
and a very prolific narrator on the side. Because you know, you know what the TV newscaster right. deal is. Right. And during the day, he was running around doing uh, studio work. Great narrator, and I'll share one of the tricks that he did because I love to share this story. Um, when we were doing, you know, he did a lot of corporate narration, say a ten-minute, fifteen-minute show, and everything that we do at our studio is a directed session. So the director's there giving direction, and we're stopping and starting, and we'll get through the whole ten-minute show in maybe a half hour. And when it's all done, what do you think? Mr. Client, the client would say, wow, that was fabulous. I loved it. Larry would say, you know, just for me, I'd like to do the whole thing over again. <laughs> now that I know yeah. the direction and everything else. And the client said, you want, let's try it. All right. Boom. He would do the whole 10 minutes, make a few mistakes, remember all the direction and give a fabulous performance. And the client said, that was even better. Uh, time after time after time. And that was just right. the, something that made that talent stand out and guess what they would call him back, back and they would again. say let's get that larry burrell again oh that, that's <laughs> great and you know lots of other folks and uh, uh bill ratner andre stoika used to come into the old studio years ago and then they got isdn and home studios um tom kane uh, is a friend of mine and i started uh working with tom when he owned an ad agency and used to do voiceover for his own projects and then he came to us one day and said you know i'm getting rid of my agency, and I'm going in the voiceover business. And yeah. Linda and I looked at each other and said, what? You have a successful ad agency. No, I'm going to give it a shot. And the rest is history. Voice yeah. of Yoda. Uh, he's done you know, tremendous games and oh, yeah. done the Oscars three times. Yeah. Great guy. Still keep in touch. In fact, Excellent. he just uh, went on Twitter for the first time. Wow. He's, uh, Some like, people are catching up. 21st finally. century. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you're, let's talk a little bit about the voiceover business because sure. you deal with voice actors right. all the time. Yeah. Uh, you're a big proponent of social media, or, or at least of networking, and right. because this is a business of relationships, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So what, what advice do you have for people that are you know, trying to get going in this sure. business? One of the things that uh, I love social media, and it's been successful for my business, and live social media in particular. I love live social media. And I've found that you know, people like to make that face-to-face -face connection. Sure, Facebook is cool, and there's groups, and... Twitter, you know, I've been on Twitter for a long time. I'm not in Facebook, but one of these days. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn is a valuable tool. Uh, Tracy Lindley has that great uh, well, course webinar is, that she does, yeah. of course, about, but, and he, here's the basis of Tracy's thing on LinkedIn that I learned on Twitter, you know, eight years ago, that the people that you want to interact with and socialize with, yes, it's great to have a network of voiceover people, and it's great to know that you guys as a resource yeah voiceover are yeah. important but they don't hire people exactly yeah. you want to go to where the clients are the potential clients documentary producers video producers filmmakers uh, uh e-learning producers instructional designers that's who you want to socialize with live and social media on meetup meetup.com you can find all kinds of meetups for instructional designers and e-learning folks and you should go and participate in those why you know oh i'm a voiceover person what do i know about e-learning uh, you read e-learning scripts and have a lot to contribute and maybe throw out some advice. And when people say, well, you're an e-learning narrator, well, you seem like a normal person. Do you have a car? <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. And it's like, boom, that's how it works. Yeah. Say someone is just starting out. Mm -hmm. What would you suggest is the first thing they should do in, in, in networking? Because they're not going to know anybody. That's true. Well, I always say start locally because there's lots of opportunities locally. Chamber of Commerce is one. Uh, there are, like I said, meetup.com. Meetup.com has meetups in every you know, city around the country. Uh, but Google is your friend. You know, find uh, video producers that are in the area. There used to be an association called ITVA, became MCAI. Right. Now there are a couple of chapters that are still active. Liz Dineshner is very mm -hmm. active in her chapter in the east. Uh, we have a very active chapter in Orange County. Of uh, It's called SoCal Media Pros now uh, because they've disbanded MCAI. But... It's video producers that get together once a month and share um, share information about uh, you know the technology and what's new and what's hot and they'll recap NAB and that kind of stuff. So you're hanging with those people and many voiceover people come hang with them because they want to find out what's new in technology, but they also want to have that face to face right. contact with people. So big proponent of that. Yeah. Now, is someone who also casts voiceover talent? Now you're you're in there. I take it that. Clients say, can you find me a voice? And, and I'm sure that happens probably yes. once a day or something. Yes. Some people call that old school. Yeah. But in Southern California, I think there's a lot of that that goes on. And actually, I have found 
because uh, I have a client that likes us to find, they, they record subject matter experts in other parts of the country. So I've had to run around and search for studios in other parts of the country in the most surprising places, Texas and, you know, just things that you wouldn't think that are the hubs of uh, wherever. And I have found many other studios like ours run by one person or two people or a husband and wife who do the same kind of thing that we do, that cast voices. They, I see on their website they have a pool of talent. Uh, you know, it's uh, so there is hope for everybody in the country to find a lo- I, I, I'm a high proponent of finding a local studio and making a relationship with a local studio that does this kind of recording. Right. Sure, there's lots of music studios out there, but there are a lot of media studios out there as well. Yeah. And so when I say old school, well, when I started in the 80s, there weren't places to, there was no Voice123 and Voices.com right. to find voice talent or uh, any Capidalgo, any of the other casting sites. Uh, now, I mean, you just Google search it and everybody's a voice talent and you find all Everybody, kinds of things. Everybody. Uh, but because we've been in the business a long time and I have clients that I've had for 20, 25, 30 years plus that have stayed loyal to me and uh, the ones that are busy, that, that are concerned about their time, will just make one email, one phone call to us. And we'll help them find a voice. Or, you know, have still quite a few clients like that. Now, I'm sure you've heard lots of different voices and all types of people when, you know, if you're networking like this. Yes. If somebody's new and you're like, well, this is, this is an interesting person. I might want, you know, might want to, you know, audition them sure. or, or try them on a project. How does someone prepare if they're not used to actually working in a studio mm-hmm. uh, or with a producer or somebody else? How it's the best way to prepare for, for a session I would hope like that, that if the person has training, that the yeah. training is with somebody, live training where they're coaching or directing or whatever. Because doing a project with a director or with two directors or with a client is much like that. You're just doing the read and you're getting feedback and direction. You're taking it in and you're doing your performance. Not being feeling like you're being criticized. Right. Or we're not coaching, we're directing. You know, We're trying to you know, pull the best. We're all on the same side. And we're all trying to pull the best performance out, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, there's that. Yeah. It, it, is, it is a challenge. Uh, I, we've actually had a few people say, you know what? I don't do directed sessions. We only do directed sessions at our studio. Right. That means either a director is there in the room with us, a director is listening on the phone, and I, I've actually mixed the phone with the with the talent. I mean, even a professional studio person <laughs> makes that mistake sh- once in a while. Sh- done it. <laughs> yeah. Sh- wait. Wait. We got, wait. I realized my mistake. Let's do it over right, right now. There's you know something what? wrong. I, one thing I've learned is that when you do make a mistake, like just like we did at the beginning of this segment, you have to like immediately call it. I screwed up. Let's do it again. You know, like don't go. Oh, hope they don't notice. <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll notice. So <laughs> then, uh, but I've actually had a couple of people say that you know I I don't feel comfortable being directed live or or doing directed sessions. Well, if you aspire to doing high-end commercials and you aspire to doing the best of the best and getting paid a lot of money, better get over it. Oh, because, absolutely. Because uh, that's what those are the those are the sessions you want. Yeah. Those are the sessions where when a client talks to you and hears your delivery and hears you take direction and hears your performance, that's how you build loyalty. That's how you build client loyalty. The director appreciates it, and I can't tell you how many times people come back and say, you know, let's get that person we had last time because wow, that was so easy. And she performed so well, and, yeah. and I just loved what she oh, did. Being directed is a treat. It is a treat. When you're alone in your studio all the time going, how should I do this? This is what something different. Say? Yes. This is like, try no second way. guessing. Try it that way. It's much more fun. It cuts down on redos. It cuts down on callbacks and pickups and those kinds of things. Believe me, uh, when we're done, we've gotten all opportunities to get all our possible choices, and that's it. And I guess the other good thing about it is we do all the editing. We do all the editing post-production. So... It's you get to do what your favorite thing to do is, is read. So those are the kinds of clients you want, and there's lots of people out there still doing that. All right. Hey, if you're just joining us, you've missed a whole lot already. We're talking with Tim Keenan from Creative Media Recording in Cypress, California, which is just south of here, about 40 miles. And uh, But it's it, all right, it's Orange County, but it's still... It's L.A. Right. It's, it's we the, like to say five miles from Disneyland. Disneyland, yeah. Because yeah. surprisingly, uh, I have a couple of clients, uh, a couple of voice talents, who come from like the Bay Area and uh, on a, to Disneyland on a regular basis, yeah. and we're their go-to studio because we're five miles away. Excellent. Sure, they could set up the pillow fort in the <laughs> hotel room, but if it's an ISDN session or something that they need right away, right. we're just five miles away. Absolutely, and the convention center we picked up business from that. Excellent. Location, location, location. That's it. It's it's always location. 
Uh, if you've got a question for Tim, throw it in the chat room right now and our czar of social media, Jack Daniel, will relay that question to us in our next segment. So put it in the chat room right now. Um, what about demos? Do you, you do demos over there? Yes. I'm sure you do. Yes, I do demos. How, you know, I, yeah. I, I would, let, me, I, let me put it this way. I do demos, but I don't sell myself as a demo producer. I've never really promoted the demo production side of it. I'm more so lately because, uh, you know, the studio business has evolved and changed. And I also feel like I have something to contribute. But I've been producing demos for people, friends, voiceover mm -hmm. people. Uh, primarily, they were compilation demos. You know, somebody would come in with a stack of things or a list of YouTube sites and say, Hey, Tim, you know what? You have a great ear. You pick. These right. are the things that I think were good that people complimented me on, and let's cut something together. Right. And what services do you provide of that? Do you provide the scripts? or I what? do, yes, what, because primarily for the corporate side of it, e-learning and corporate and medical, uh, because that's our specialty. Uh, of our studio business, You know, 70% of it is the corporate non-broadcast side of it, right. and 30% is we have a couple of really nice commercial accounts we do commercial right. stuff for. So you probably so have I a tower do... of Babel of, uh, of scripts lying that's there. That's it. And I draw from our you know real projects, real projects that we've done, and, uh, and also uh, some other material that I've gathered. So that's my forte, is the corporate side of it. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I can do a killer commercial demo. I've done a few of those, too. Um, and I, but as, if you want a promo demo, go to somebody who specializes in it. If you want an animation demo, I recommend other people go to someplace and have an animation demo done by somebody else because I don't do a whole lot of animation. Yeah. When someone is doing a demo, because I think a lot of people are like, I got to have a demo. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my own opinions about how demos are supposed to be, sure. but I don't produce them. Right. I could, but I don't. Right. I let you guys that do them all day do it because mm -hmm. I, I have other mm -hmm. things to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. I got to go walk the dog and mm -hmm. various other things. But uh, how. Uh, what do you expect from the talent when they're going to prepare a demo? What do you tell them and how do they, what, when do they know they're even ready to do it? Exactly. Demo? Well, I, I think you can tell, you know, dealing with somebody when somebody's ready. Not, not, you know, they've reached a certain level where they've prepared, they read every day, they've worked with a coach, they've worked with a coach to maybe prepare some of the material for their demo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say the difference, you know, I own a studio and people say, well, you're a technical guy. Can you help me with this technical stuff? No. Uh, that's what differentiates me from the two of you guys is that you guys came from the engineering technical background and I came from the production side. So while I have a little bit of technical knowledge, my background is production. And so I bring my production expertise to the table in all the projects that we work on, right. including demos. So clients hire me because I have production expertise. We do sweetening. We've cleaned up projects for people for videos. We've done uh, audio for video. We've done, you know, gobs and gobs of just straight narration and e-learning. But uh, we've also done foreign language versions, as I mentioned, and uh, we have resources for finding talent for that and and helping do the translation, soup to nuts, that kind of thing. So I let the technical guys do the technical stuff, and I do the production stuff. So that's kind of what I bring to the table is I, I hundreds of production uh, discs and music libraries and resources to draw from from production music and sound effects because I've gathered all that stuff. Over. And that's the important stuff that's is the important to have stuff. that have the elements right. to, to use as, as exactly uh, for background and and for the production that you do. Now, and that's the difference between a studio like yours Correct. and someone with a home studio. It's a completely different environment. Now, and I'm sure you, I mean, you have ISDN and yes. you Source Connect and you, you do remote sessions with people or s people send you audio. What do you expect from them? And, and, and how, you know, and, and how bad are some of the studios well, you've heard? You touched and then on could it. I have their names? Yes. You touched on it because <laughs> it's, it's. Earlier, when you were talking about the technical side of it, the noise floor, uh, if you're going to work for somebody like us, for a studio that's directed, you have to have a great facility that's very quiet. Because I'm going to hear that as soon as I dial in. That's not something like a post-production patch would fix. You've got to have that dialed in so that when we connect via IPDTL, you know, I don't have Source Connect. Oh. I, I need to get Source Connect. I see they're one of your sponsors. So we'll talk afterwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, But I, we've had ISDN for many years. In fact, w what prompted the ISDN was a lot of voiceover people were not able to come down anymore. Well, we'll use Bill Ratner as an example because he landed in an account that was a broadcast account that needed he needed to be close to the studio. So he couldn't run to far away studios like Orange County. He could go within a few miles of his home. And eventually it was like, boom, it had to be ISDN. So I said, well, let's look at this ISDN thing. So we got ISDN early on. And uh, we're a resource for ISDN for, like, NPR. We're in their database. Any NPR station around the country 
if there's a subject matter expert near Disneyland <laughs> in our area <laughs> doing, let's say, a book tour or something like that, right. they tend to find us. We've had mm. Guy Fieri in our studio doing mm. Dryner's Drive-Ins and Dives. The production mm. company found us. We didn't do it ISDN, actually. We did a phone patch. Yeah. But they found us because we're listed in all these resource guides uh, at primarily as ISDN and, and mm. a, 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 a remote studio resource. And uh, so, you know, that's opened up a lot of doors for us to have that technology. But as soon as you click in with ISDN or IPDTL or uh, Connection Open, I've used very successfully. One particular talent, uh, the two of us have connected with that better than any other uh, any other element. And that was something I got from Dave Cavassier. Yeah. And uh, you hear dogs barking and leaf blowers and, and children and things and, like that. Yeah. So you've got to have your noise floor down. You've got to have a quiet studio to be able to work it with directed sessions and outside studios. Yeah. Here's a, well, let's change gears here for a second. Mm -hmm. Aside from having a very successful recording studio in Cyprus, you <laughs> also have been very civically minded. Now, last week we had Mike Lenz on the show, who used to be the mayor of Saratoga Springs in upstate New York. You were the mayor. You served on a city council and were mayor of Cyprus for a couple of years. That's Tell true. us a little bit about your, your political career. Well, it was a few years after we had moved to Cyprus, yeah. and I had spent a lot of money building a beautiful studio in Cyprus. They wanted to build a casino in the nearby Los Alamitos racetrack, which is in the city of Cyprus. And my wife and I said, a casino? Mm, that's not really something we want to have close to our business. You know, Cyprus has, it's an image town. There's the headquarters of Mitsubishi Motors mm -hmm. and Yamaha Corporation and some big name people. United Health has uh, 3,000 employees there. Name people. And it was this was a California style casinos before the Indian casinos came to California, and uh, we just said, nah, it's not something we really want. So, <coughs> as citizens, we challenged that and uh, got politically active. And uh, wouldn't you know, we defeated the casino by spending. We raised about sixteen thousand dollars, including some pro bono legal help, and the casino spent half a million dollars, and the citizens won. It was yeah. like David no, versus Goliath. The lawyers won. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> no, the citizens won. Uh -huh. Yeah, the lawyers won too. So. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, so, of course, after that, then it's like uh, two of the people who helped us got elected to city council, and they were constantly outvoted three to two. Tim, we need to find one more person to run for city council. And uh, so there you go. I was being very civic-minded. And uh, it was funny because uh, I have a producer client friend who was in the city council in Costa Mesa, a nearby city in Orange County, and I called him for advice. And you know what his advice was? Mm. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just, so I knew that was coming. Now when people <laughs> ask me, Tim, should I run for my town council in my city? I would say, nah, nah. don't do it. It, it, was a, it d was a drain on business. I, I felt very good about it. I did some fantastic things. Uh, while I was on the city council, I served two terms as mayor. We, we rotate mayor in our city, and so I got to, to be a mayor twice in that eight-year period. But uh, even better, I was elected to the board of the Orange County Transportation Authority, an even bigger organization with a billion-dollar budget, 11-member board. I actually got to be chairman of the board for one year, and uh, that was where I felt like you know I was able to give back to Orange County, and we did a lot of good things from the transportation standpoint. Yeah. And that's why when you get into Orange County, the freeways are so wide and they flow so smoothly. Nice. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this is, this yeah. is nice. Yeah. And that's how my mom gets around now, there you too, go. and on Orange County Transport. There you, you go. Know, it's the senior citizen yes. uh, stuff. The access bus? Yes. 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 Yeah. She Perfect. loves it. It's like, cool. she doesn't drive anymore. It's like, I can go where, I can go play Mahjong wherever I want. There you go. I love it. All right. So well, there you go. That's my political story. Cool. And I, I feel like I, it was a great community service, and I felt like I did it, and... Good. Let's move on and, to the voice. And, and, you're, and you did it, and you're done, and it's like, all right, let's move on. That's it. All right, if you've got a question for Tim, once again, throw it in the chat room right now, and we'll get to that question in just a few minutes. But right now, we're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop. So don't go away. Style. Power. You're watching the home of the NFL. The all-new iPhone. Reserve your Disney World season pass now. Through all the runny noses, three in the morning coughs. An all-new American crime story, tonight on FX. This week only, it's Pasta Fest at Olive Garden. Heart rate, prime. Blood pressure, perfect. I grew up with the classics, and now with StubHub, I can get authentic tickets to the best shows. The all-new Chevy Cruze from $16,995. Be inspired. Then get the beauty that's uniquely yours at Sephora. 
This week at Home Depot, it's our Garden Fest sale with up to 30% off all garden tools, sod, and seeds. Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. So, Tim, uh, the sun still has not set, Ben. You know, this it's, is fabulous. It's sunset all year oh, round. Oh, wow. Here. We love that. I know. California. It's important, you know, we, we talk about, you know, quality audio. As we were just discussing, you know, people have noises and all sorts of stuff. You, you tell people, you know, it's like you, the audio doesn't sound right, right? Correct. And, 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 what, and what do you usually tell them? I refer them to somebody to help them out. Right. That, uh, we, you know, we, we need to find what the source of the issue is, you know? Right. And, and then if you're going to make an investment, you know, people, Oh, I just bought this $1,500 microphone. Or I just oh, yeah. it's like, uh, but what about your studio? You know, how, 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 what's the investment in the area, the space where you record, you know, is that locked down? Have you spent some money on that to make it solid? Right. You know? And if you want to spend money on that, there's a great place you can go. It's voiceoveressentials.com. And you can get just about anything you want there. But most importantly, you have Harlan Hogan's Signature Series products, like the VO1A microphone, which our co-host George Woodham is now displaying. You can click to George for a second. And I don't know if it's on camera. Oh, it's not on camera? Well, let's just aim a camera at it. Yeah, there we go. Now that we works. And there it is, the VO1A microphone in George's hand. And uh, mm -hmm. great design for voiceover microphone. Or the VO1A headphones, which George is also wearing. He can turn the camera and show you those. And uh, they're great headphones. Right there they are, right there. And, uh, and he's got some other great products that he's designed himself specifically for voiceover. And he also gives you access to all sorts of other stuff at voiceoveressentials.com. All you got to do is go right there, and the best way to do that is to go to the bottom of the, our homepage that you are probably watching this show on right now and click on the icon of Harlan Hogan talking into his VO1A microphone and his Portabooth Pro. And, uh, again, more products that he has. Uh, and that's the best place to get the stuff you need for your home voiceover studio and your voiceover needs. He even has lots of books and stuff. Really good stuff. So, anyway... Go over to voiceoveressentials.com and buy everything he has right now. Well, maybe wait till after the show. But anyway, thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor for seven and a half years here on VoiceOver wow. Body Shop. We really appreciate it. Go buy more stuff. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the VoiceOver Body Shop. All righty. Let's talk a little bit about what you do. You talked about, you know, you do sweetening and those sorts of things. These are not things people should attempt to do at home unless they really know what they're doing. Correct. Right? I, I would say, you know, the business that we built up doing that kind of stuff is we, we work with a lot of video producers. Uh, that you know, that's, that's my opportunity to do something not, not that's even beyond the voiceover side of it is doing scores and finding a right piece of music and finding the right sound effects and that kind of thing. I've, you know, built up a library of stuff over the decades that we've been doing it. I can right. pull something out, you know, like that. Right. So do, do you believe that the best thing that any voice actor can do if they're sending you audio is to give you clean, dry mono file and that's it. And don't mess with it. Absolutely. Don't normalize, uh, right. necessarily. Uh, don't definitely don't edit out the breaths. I'm a big proponent of not editing out breaths. But that's your job. That's my job. Right. And and I don't edit out breaths. You know, we especially for our e-learning projects, you don't need to sanitize and de-breath. You need to minimize, you need to keep it in there, but you want to keep the read to be as human sounding as possible. Right. That's the one thing I tell people is like in 30 years that I've been doing this business, from the razor blade days to the electronic days, I have never had a client say, hey, can we cut out all the breaths? Yeah. And yeah. why are people doing it? It's because they're listening with headphones and they're being super hypercritical of themselves. And it's like, you know what? The the people who are listening to your content are listening for, for content. Right. They're listening for the subject matter. They're listening for the material. And if it's totally deep breathed, uh, David H. Lawrence wrote a great piece on it. Go to David H. Lawrence's website, Vio to Go Go, and check out his site on not cutting breaths. Because what he talks about is it takes the soul out of the project. 
it, it you you ca- find yourself catching your breath as you're listening because you're uh, like well, the, where's the breath where's the space for the breath right video editors are notorious for taking somebody's voiceover and chopping out the breath but also chopping out the space right. so it's this lovely sentence 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 slam <laughs> yeah sentence 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 and slam right. you know and it's like to the viewer it's like what the heck just a, happened it's yeah. a, a sentence slammed into a sentence a very unfortunate trend in youtube editing oh yes oh, yeah. oh, oh yes. Yeah. God. yeah yeah too much of that you, too much what are you doing here i oh <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> just jumps right in <laughs> anyway yeah so with, i think what carpenters call a butt hinge yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, a butt hinge a butt hinge oh yes <laughs> we're butted up and yeah. hinged together <laughs> yeah so what's sort of like that shot there Anyway, uh, have some questions? Yeah, do we have some questions from our amazing audience, Jack Daniel? All right, let's go to some of these questions. Mr. Whittem, you get the first question. Oh, well, the, actually, the first question looks like it's more of a general question to to, to all of us or to you and me, Dan? I'm not yeah, sure. From, it, says, it was, it was to us, Gillinger. but I figured I'd address this to Tim. Yeah, where might I start looking on your site, or any site for that matter, for information for beginners to get their feet wet? Thanks for your consideration and relay, William I, Gillender. I, I think he missed the P. I think he went reply. Relay, relay, reply, reply. 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 Yeah, well, best way to get your feet wet. Typing. Hot tub. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> well, when people call and people call all the time, or you know, send us an email or whatever, it's like I've been told I have a wonderful voice, and we've all heard these, you know. So there are every day lots yeah. of lots of resources and lots of places we go. Um, years ago, Sylvia Amarito, a voiceover gal from Southern California, and I about fifteen years ago, we started our own. Four week, once a year voiceover workshop for people that to face that kind of thing because we would say, "Oh, go find a workshop somewhere." And there were some great workshops in Southern California, and so we started doing that. I think that trend has kind of run its course. We both got very busy, and so we have we've suspended that for now. We haven't done one over a year, and uh, but we are, I am doing at Creative Media some Saturday workshops with some sub- subject matter experts who are. We're, we're hosting him at my studio, basically. Uh, Anthony Gettig, when he was in town uh, six months ago or so, he and I did a marketing workshop together, and Anthony shared some great resources, and yeah. that was fun because he was in town. And I said, Anthony, come on down and do a Saturday workshop. Okay. Mm-hmm. August 4th, Everett Oliver is going to be in studio, and he does a coaching workshop. He's going to coach for animation and commercial, mm-hmm. and it'll be on his website. So go to uh, Everett Oliver's website, which is uh, my booth my, director. My, my booth director, yeah, yes. Dot com. And uh, be, and we've hosted for a number of folks. Brian Page is a voiceover director guy down great in Orange guy. County. Yeah, Brian's a great guy. Yeah, we've done some things together. Saturday workshops, so a little four-hour workshop, snacks at one point, and uh, we just have some fun. It's really a great resource. But um, m- you know, one of the places that I recommend, me personally, Tim Keenan, for uh, you know d- getting started for a raw beginner getting started is uh, Rhonda at introduction to voiceover dot mm-hmm. com introduction to voiceover introduction to voiceovers i don't remember off the top of my head now uh, but she's got a great program that's she's put all on video now she used to do it live with webinars and that kind of thing she yeah. decided it was hard to get everybody on the same date same time so now it's just 199 dollars and buy her webinar yeah so i would i would also recommend uh peter o'connell's website oh, audio o'connell and he has the voice the voiceover uh, uh, entrance exam. Entrance exam. <laughs> yes, which is great. It, it'll answer. It'll answer more questions or create more questions than answers. But you know, it's like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing. This and Google or, is your friend. And meetups. Yeah, There's absolutely. actually a meetup that started in Orange County about a year mm-hmm. and a half ago uh, that I participate in, and Everett Oliver has come to many of them too. Uh, Tom Jordan, uh, an audiobook narrator, started this about a year and a half ago. He charges two dollars. Great information. So if you're down in Orange County. Uh, it's a fun meetup. We get about 25, 30 people who come every month. And right. uh, sometimes we have guest speakers and share some great resources. All right. Well, now it's time for our weekly Jack Attack. Tack, 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 tack. <laughs> Jack Daniel gets to ask his question. Jack. I just love that. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, thank you for this great information. It's, it's really interesting. <coughs> I, it, everyone's really loving it. Um, Everyone in the VO world loves to complain about the race to the bottom in terms of rates, and that's often driven by buyers who don't know better and will often uh, not realize the value of, say, someone in your position like a casting director. Could you, from your perspective as one, give the sort of the value pitch to, say, a buyer, a, you know, a, a hypothetical buyer who you know, doesn't understand what you can bring to the equation? Sure. Uh, as, far as, our, as far as our clients, if a, if a client came to us and said, race to the bottom, 
and I don't want to pay a lot for talent. We, we, we try to explain the value of what, uh, the, what the, the, the training and the expertise and the resources that go into that. Now, the issue that I face is that on top of the fee for talent, I'm charging a studio fee as well. So I not only do you have to sell the value of the talent, I have to sell the value of the value add of us being there doing live directed sessions. And I'm proud to say that because I've been doing this a long time, I'm able to do that in many cases. And in some cases I can't. And so I've lost a few clients to the pay to plays and they're just going on doing themselves and maybe they're directing, I don't know. And they didn't see the value in hiring us and going to a studio, but many do. In fact, I manage projects for a number of e-learning producers who don't want to be involved in that process. They don't want to have to go searching for talent. Uh, they don't want to have to, you know, every talent has a different way of delivering files. Every talent has different levels of normalization. And so then they would get a project and it's like, well, this doesn't match a project I got from that other voice. And this doesn't match from that other voice, but when everything they get from Tim Keenan and creative media, all the same, mm -hmm. the files are cut exactly the same way. Levels the same way. It doesn't matter if it's our home studio. It doesn't matter if I recorded somebody IPDTL or ISDN or in my booth, it all sounds comparable. So I vet, you know, the people that we work with so that, you know, they would at least match our standard, whether it's the noise, you know, of their room or whether it's the quality of the microphone or mm -hmm. the quality of the connection, whatever. All so, right. Yeah. It, 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 mm -hmm. As far as promoting the value of it. Yeah. It's a challenge. It is a challenge and, and it, we're all facing it every, and me too. Me too. We're all facing that, <laughs> that, that, that particular challenge that raised the body. It is hard. All right. JV Martin has a question. George. Yeah, actually, I'll get to mine real quick. But we were, you touched on, you know, the quality of equipment, and the quality of sound. We talked about your mics earlier. Any other special sauce? Do you have a preamp? It's like, I got to use this preamp, blah, blah, blah. What are some of the other things that your tools of the trade at the studio that you like? Is that a question from you? Yeah, from yeah. me. From yeah, me. Yeah, I'll yeah, get the yeah. JV Martin. <laughs> yeah, this is my yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm not a big. Uh, you know, I, I went through that equipment phase in the '90s. You know, yeah. oh, I had to have a microphone. I had to have this. I had to have that. I had to have a ribbon microphone. Yeah, and uh, I had to have this preamp and so on and so forth. I've settled on what uh, I like in my particular situation. You know, I've listened to Avalon's, and Avalon has a color to it, so I'm not a big Avalon fan. I'm a Grace fan. So mm -hmm. I have a Grace uh, 101 that I got that I bought used from a studio that was going out of business. And so I bought some stuff and wow, it made my Neumann sound better than I had ever liked it before. I'm biased because I know, I know the Grace You guys. know the guys at Grace. Yes. Yeah. Their, their factory is just north of Boulder. Oh, okay. And I've hung out with them. I've met, been there. I met them at AES. met them at NAB. Great and, people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was impressed enough that I went out and bought another one. I mm -hmm. bought the Grace Channel Strip, the 103. The 103 is great. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. And like the sound of it. I have an art uh, processor or a, a preamp that has a tube preamp that's, you know, I yeah. play with it once in a while, pull that in for things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a mix and mash, a mishmash. A mishmash. A DBX, yeah, yeah. A DBX uh, preamp. But... Yeah, I've never gone out and felt like I need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. What do you like to edit with? What's your mixing uh, the, tool? The the tool that we use is Soundtrack Pro. Oh, the software yeah. that we use, Soundtrack, Soundtrack Pro, Pro. Which I've had for a long time, and I know all the ins and outs, and they don't yeah. support it anymore at Apple. Uh. It was part of Logic, mm -hmm. and it was part of Final Cut. A lot of my clients are video clients, right. and they edit on Final Cut. And so for us sharing uh, files and projects back and forth, it worked really well. Now I'm just like, I'm looking at Adobe. Probably. You're a man on the island right now? Yeah, I'm a man on the island. And when your Mac dies, you're going to have that's to. That's it. We'll be happy to teach you Adobe Audition. I think Adobe Audition. That's, yeah, a couple of people have also offered to teach me Adobe Audition. I think that's where I'm headed next. Because I, I've heard the learning curve transitioning out of it. But I also have Twisted Wave. Mm -hmm. And I also have uh, some secret sauce that I use for uh, e-learning file making that I'm not going to share. Keep it in secret. secret. It's a secret. It's a secret. you got to hire them. <laughs> All righty. Uh, JV. Yeah. JV Martin. Uh, you were talking about the mics you have. As I get older now into my 60s, should I consider any particular a particular mic to help my <laughs> attempt to not sound old? Or oh, I've my never God. sounded young the even as a mic. kid. I already, I already raised my copy stand way up when I need a younger sound. It was great, and he said, and it was also great meeting you at VO Atlanta. I was going to say, I had the pleasure of meeting JV yeah. at VO Atlanta. He took uh, one of our, uh, Ann Ganguza and I did a thing together about corporate narration. And JV has great pipes because he's done a lot of uh, uh, video work for uh, some 
TV networks. Right. And so it's a like a TV network narrator. I think I think what's buried in there is can a microphone make, make you, you sound, sound younger? younger? Wow. Or a preamp. <laughs> a microphone or a preamp. Uh, I don't know about that one. No, no. But, but, you know, I would recommend playing around with different microphones to make your sound more pleasant. Uh, you know, if you can borrow somebody. Not that somebody. being old is going to make you no, unpleasant. No, but, not at uh, all. But if you're not trying to sound old, don't use a warm ribbon mic or something that accentuates low end. Yes. That's something you probably want to avoid. That would, I would say that, especially yeah. if you have big pipes, mm-hmm. you know, that great, you know, deep voice. When we say big pipes, that's a that typical kind of deep voice or warm, rich voice. So then you want something that accentuates maybe the mids and upper mids, you know. Mm-hmm. There's well, no easy answer to that, JV. Yeah. Borrow you. some mics and uh, see what guitar center, you. you know, whatever. I don't right. know. Uh, Blair uh, has, has a question. She's recovering. We're glad that you're back with us, Blair. Uh, what's the weirdest thing a client has asked you uh, to get from your voiceover talent? Uh, yeah, think about yeah, that. It's a long list, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, w- the cool thing about what we do is that every day is truly different. I mean, we, you know, yes, I said we do a lot of corporate and we do a lot of e-learning and we have a lot of repeat clients, but we have done some, one of everything in the 30 years that we've been in business. In fact, I put together a laundry list of kinds of the things that you could do, but the weirdest thing, um, Linda, can you help me? <laughs> uh, we've done, we've had to do some weird things. I would say, um, I can't pick any one thing, but you know, uh, well, okay. We used to have a studio cat, and okay. we actually captured some cat sounds uh, for uh, you know a project that we're doing. I picture will say, you running around the studio with a four six. It, it was it was funny. It wasn't something a client asked for, but for two seasons we did the audio for a reality TV show called Who Let the Dogs Out. And, of course, it involved a lot of dog right. sound effects and, and all kinds of things. And the one thing that I could not find in any of our sound effects libraries was the jingle jangle of the dog collar as the <laughs> dog walked around. And uh, the, the star dog had a beautiful set of collars and clinky things. And so a friend was in the studio with his dog, and I said, Hey, we're working on this show called Who Let the Dogs Out? Could we borrow? Could we take your dog in the studio? Could we record some jingle jangle? And we did. We had a whole, whole bunch That's of what, it. And every time he watched the show, which of course then he started watching the show, and he heard jingle jangle jingle, he knew that was his dog's dog calling. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was yeah. cute. Two uh, seasons of that. Question from Natasha Vox. She says, uh, "You are very active on Twitter and LinkedIn, and do the most wonderful, relevant, consistent job that I have seen." Are you thinking that Facebook and Instagram are relevant for your business? Also, what social mediums seem to have the best return on investment for you? I know you touched on that a little bit yes. earlier. Uh, Twitter has been, you know, surprisingly, I am uh, very active on Twitter. I'm live, I have two different accounts because after I started a voiceover account where I was sort of tweeting to voiceover people, which I interact with a lot of voiceover people, so that was important to me. But I realized I took a class in Twitter for Business and it was like, no, no, you need to be reaching out to clients. So I started a different Twitter account where I talk about audio and voiceover from the client's perspective and offer my expertise and advice. And I set myself up as a subject matter expert on that. But my voiceover Twitter page has exploded. I have 9,000, 9,900 followers. I am close to 10,000 followers wow. on my voiceover Twitter page. So uh, I would say that I've made, I've made some great friends and met some great resources on Twitter. And that's why one of the blogs that I wrote was, You know what? Just because you think somebody's doing voiceover, don't fail to read their bio and don't fail to go after folks that are producer types because, you know, sure enough, somebody will follow me and say, hey, thanks. I love connecting with other voiceover people. I'm like, well, he didn't read my bio because my bio clearly says I cast voices. So "Mm, missed opportunity. Ah, Next one. And he'll never go back. If, If when you follow somebody, you haven't looked at their bio, you're unlikely to go back and start looking at bios, you know? Right. But uh, as you're going along in the process, look at a bio, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Right. Who is this person? It's a key point. There, right. there is a blog on my website about social media for uh, voiceover people. I highly recommend people take yeah. a look at What's that. What's your website address, by the way? Uh, creativemediarecording.com. Thanks. We've got a lot of listeners on podcasts, so they won't see the title. Oh, there right. you go. Yeah. Creativemediarecording.com. Dot com. All right. You know, since we're on that little social media topic, let me just share. I, I would like to be on Facebook. In fact, I'm looking for a Facebook friend. Maybe we can trade resources for some assistance in getting started on Facebook. Because I've been promising Ann Gangusa that I would get on Facebook and 
get into all those Facebook, uh, all those great Facebook voiceover uh, subgroups. That it will suck in. the life. I know, out of I know, <laughs> exactly. So the value I, I want to do it. The yeah. value is definitely in the groups, but yeah. I want some help, and I want to, yeah. you know, be involved yeah. in groups. Like, but talking about social media, you had a guest a couple of weeks ago, Dave Cavassier, yeah, and I use him as a great example because he is a giver. Mm -hmm. He gives away a lot of great time and information and resources, and. Let's use, and many people know Dave Cavassier and subscribe to his daily blog. And if you don't, I if do. you're a listener and it's you first don't thing subscribe I read to his the morning. daily blog. Exactly. But let's flip that on his head. If Dave Cavassier took that energy that he puts into that daily blog. Now, Dave Cavassier's background is a TV newscaster, and he knows news, and he knows presentation in front right. of a camera. Right. If he did a weekly blog for corporate executives and communication people about microphone presence, delivery, dealing with the press. Uh, I say this because I do know a former TV newscaster who has that as her business. And she helps advise people on uh, their presence in front of camera and their presence in crisis management and those types of things, which Dave would be perfect at. Think how much business would turn around to Dave. You know, if he channeled all that energy that he does for voiceover, what does he get out of that? He's not a coach. He's not a demo producer. He's just a great guy who loves to share his information. But yeah. if he flipped it around and he pointed his expertise at people who could potentially hire him, how many people would see his blog or read his blog and say, you know, we should have that guy as our spokesperson. On camera, voiceover, mm -hmm. whatever. Many things would follow yeah. if he were to do that. And I know he's actually doing that. Oh, my course. goodness. So he's, I did not know that. I'm just yeah. throwing that out. Yeah. I mean... He's he's retired now. Yeah, from from his you know from his newscast. So he has days. opportunity to do that. And he hates he when you say that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's but not, you know, he's retired uh, so, from newscasting. So, so what I say is, everybody has an expertise of some kind that could come back to being hired for voiceover. Right. You know, it's something to think about. Right. Final question of the night comes from our dear friend Rosie Amador in Boston. Tim, great to see you here. In addition to what Natasha asked, do you also use Email is part of your marketing strategy to build clientele. Absolutely. Email is very important for building clientele. But I'm also a big proponent of cold calling. Uh, you know, th that's another thing. You know, people say not only are they camera shy, they're telephone shy. Right. And th it kills them to think about uh, picking up the phone and uh, actually making phone calls. So you start with warm phone calls. You call people that you know, former clients, whatever, right. and touch base. And then you call cold people, you know, and Google is your friend and you start local. Uh, the story I love to tell is we were doing a project for the United Parcel Service. They did, they used to do a regular, they had a cast of characters, like six or seven voiceover people that they would bring into a studio and they would record sort of a whole, you know, slew of things that they used for training purposes. And they did it like once a month. Well, their regular studio wasn't available. And here came the cast crew into my studio because I was available that day. And uh, when they were leaving, uh, I met a bunch of nice, friendly voiceover people that day that I'd never worked with before. Uh, one guy came up to me and he says, wow, Tim, I am so glad to meet you. Hi, you know, my name is X, and I live right next door in the uh, <laughs> townhome complex right next to your studio. And I'm like, wow, what? We exchanged cards and right. so on and so forth. And after he left, I'm thinking, why has that person never Google searched studios and production facilities? Because there could be a video production facility right next to where you live. Right. And that's when you go over, you knock on their door, you say, hi, I'm a voiceover person. I live right next door. If you ever need a voiceover like that or an on-camera thing or right. whatever, whatever it is that you do, you start local and you work your way out. Yes. You know, People don't do that. So all those tools, email is important. And hi, Rosie, how you doing? Uh, voiceover, uh, all that stuff yeah. is uh, really cool. Yeah. Now, you brought your love life, wind, Linda, with you. I today, did. And she really runs the place, doesn't she? She does. <laughs> well, the, the great thing about Linda is Linda is our face and our voice of creative media. So she deals with the clients. She answers the phone. Another one of those things, when you're making cold calls, you do not want to upset the person that answers the phone. You think, oh, I need to talk to Tim. But surprisingly, the person who answers the phone actually plays an influential role in who works and who doesn't work <laughs> at creative media or at any other facility. Uh, and so, you know, it's like in your rush to think you're getting to the decision maker, don't overlook the person at the front desk. Oh, yes. You know? Well, I don't overlook her. I, I walk in. <laughs> I'm glad to see her smiling face when I walk but in But what there. that allows me to do as a production facility is it allows me to... Uh, you know, spend uh, the focus of my time on the studio or uh, on social media or uh, <laughs> making, you know, marketing context. She does marketing as well. 
Uh, and she makes sure everybody gets paid. She makes sure that people get scheduled on time and the projects, because fortunately we're an active, busy facility and things are jumping and we're doing stuff all the time. Well, I'm glad that things are going so well for you. Me too. And by the way, we were having our Hawaiian shirt competition tonight. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, and it was a challenge. Yes, I know. I, I brought an extra shirt too, just in case. I right? know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that one that one's a nice one. Thank you. Perfectly. Yes. Pressed oh, and thank everything. you. Thanks so much for being with us. This uh, was my privilege. Tim, it's always a pleasure I'm talking to you. I'm that you guys brought me up. Oh, our thrill. Anyway, so again, if they want to get a hold of you, uh, your website... CreativeMediaRecording.com. All righty. Fabulous. Or info at creativemediarecording.com. All right. You can email them there. All right. Thanks to Tim Keenan, and thanks to you all for watching. George and I will be right back with even more important information right after this. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back. Oh, it's always fun talking to Tim. You know, yeah, great guy to have lunch with, and and you know, pick his brain, and he picks your brain back, and then your brains are all just lying. If out you're going to pick brains, make sure there's a mutual brain picking situation. Absolutely, going on. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, next week on this show, one of our sponsors and a guy who's in the news. That's right. He uh, is. With the you know, we talked about at the top of the show, J. Michael Collins and his engineer, another great friend, A.J. McKay, hey. who does his demo production. We're going to be talking to them next week about demos mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit about the suit we'll or see whatever rob lets him say <laughs> is, uh, is rob going to be sitting right off camera no he's <laughs> still back in jersey uh, you know <laughs> this you know waiting to get onto this you know to, to argue in front of the supreme court right uh july 30th in studio chris edgerly will be here all right great voice talent uh august 6th jamie moffett and his podcast VO School Podcast. He's a voice actor, director. Mm. You know, I was on his podcast last week. I better start listening to that one. I don't have that same emba embarrassment of not listening to the guest's podcast. Yes. I yeah, better subscribe. I got to start doing that myself. Uh, <laughs> August 13th, Bob Bergen's going to be here. Hey. We'll talk about all sorts of cool stuff that's going on. A in, very uh, early, early on guest of ours on eWebs. Yes. He was like number true. three or something. Yeah. But Bob Bergen. That's right. Uh, Paul Papel will be joining us the following week. And uh, we've got lots more coming up. A little time off at the beginning of September uh, for Labor Day right. and some holidays and stuff like that. But we have a great lineup and we need to thank Catherine Currid and our fabulous uh, booking uh, producer for getting us lots of great guests coming up. Uh, for the remainder of 2018. God, it's just rolling by. <laughs> the remainder of it. <laughs> oh, goodness. All righty. Who are our donors of the week? And we thank you. We got a bunch, and you guys have heard these names before because they donate like pretty much every week, like Tracy H. Reynolds. Uh, we got one that just came in. That's a new one, a new name to me, Voice Presentations Limited. Thank you very much. That was very generous. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Kaufman. Have a great week, guys, says Andy. Thank you, man. Um, Blair Siebert. Thanks guys Thanks, for the education Blair. and the humor. She says, uh, I keep forgetting there's messages in some of these. I should read Eric Aragoni. Thanks buddy. Man, <laughs> consistent, wow. consistent. Sarah Borges, uh, and land productions. That's uncle Roy, uh, Brian Rausch, Graham Spicer. Thanks Graham. Still holding it down up there in Toronto. Jack Degolia. I, I he's I on vacation. He's man. on vacation, but he, he still donates to the show despite the time he puts in. Joseph Harrison, 
Those are all new donations since last week. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, the reason we started the show was strictly for shameless promotion of what you and I do. So shamelessly promote where you are once again. I'm shamelessly located at georgethetech.com. Or if you like short URLs, georgethe.tech is where you can find me. But georgethetech.com. All righty. And you can find me at homevoiceoverstudio.com. I am not ashamed of that at all. <laughs> uh, let's see. You have a geek podcast that you're trying to stay awake at. Yeah, the pro audio <laughs> suite. <laughs> the show could sometimes drag on with the geekitude, even too much for so me So if you're a big time geek, it's your kind you're of gonna thing. You're going to love it. Yeah, we, we interview all kinds of folks. We just had one of the original founders of the Hooters on the show. Mm. Check it out. It's the latest episode. Really fascinating stuff. We really go down the rabbit hole of tech and audio and Everything audio production. All right. The show logs. You can access the show logs from the VOBS website. It's right up there. Dan Sutton was doing is doing the show logs this week. Jack's, Thanks, Dan. He's he's on vacation. Thanks so a lot. I appreciate you filling in. Yeah. Uh, we're here every Monday night, almost every Monday night at uh, 6 p.m. If you want to be here live in our studio, get a, shoot, a studio shot there if we got it there, Susan. Uh, and show how many the people size of this is, place. is, the is cavernous packed into studio this we amazing have. studio we have. Yay! There it is. All right. <laughs> Great to have you here. All you have to do is write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV if you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area, and greater it is. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, give you the secret handshake and let you into our clubhouse. Uh, let us know when you can be here. Uh, let's see. Show us your booths. You know, we have the sunset. We like the sunset, but we'd like to see the inside of your booth shot portrait, not or la, but landscape, not portrait. Yeah, landscape. Landscape, not portrait. Like that. Yeah, so we get a wide shot so we can see what your studio looks like. We would love it. We'd love to see the innovation. Last, last week was great, right? That was a closet, the closet studio. Yes. The microphone was like this big behind. It was great. I yeah. mean, we, we, if it's funny, it's. If it's weird, weird we'll use we want to see it. It's still fun. All righty. Uh, all right. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Mm. And VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. vo to go, go VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. Well, we'd like to also thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. <laughs> our producer, Catherine Curridan, who does gets great guests for us. She does. Uh, Jack Daniels sitting right over there. All right. Yay, Jack. The chat room. <laughs> yes. And, of course, our floor producer, director, and technical person that pushes all the buttons and makes it come out the way it's supposed to, Sue Merlino. What a girl. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Dan Sutton tonight for doing the show notes for us. Thank and, you. of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee, Lee Penny. Penny. All righty. That's going to do it for us this week, right on time. And uh, we appreciate you joining us every week for help with your home voiceover studio and your voiceover career. So let's say goodnight. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next Monday night.